Hemodialysis had first been used in an attempt to treat a few patients with acute kidney failure during the 1940s. The apparatus used was crude in design, but the principles provided the basis for all the developments that have occurred subsequently. I'm Andrew Williams, a consultant nephrologist who has been based in Southwest Wales since 1984. Prior to this, I had worked in London and had done most of my training at the London Hospital in Whitechapel. It wasn't until the 1960s that hemodialysis became an effective treatment for patients with chronic kidney disease. The artificial kidneys were a little more sophisticated in design than those used 20 years previously, but were still large and the dialyzer required rebuilding between each treatment. When combined with the monitoring equipment, the Keel flat plate hemodialyzers required considerable space, which of itself presented problems. Not only were the machines and space to accommodate them in hospitals in short supply, but also the medical staff who had been operating them during the early 1960s were unable to cope with the increasing number of patients. By the time I first became involved with the treatment of patients with kidney disease in the mid 1970s, Commerce had realized the potential for the production of dialyzers, and within a few years, the Keel flat plate dialyzers were replaced by a variety of far more efficient products. Nurses, known as midwives, had been involved in childbirth since the 17th century, but in very few other disciplines had nurses played a major role in treating as opposed to caring for patients. Since then, nurses have largely replaced medical staff in providing the treatment of patients requiring hemodialysis. And furthermore, in many places, intelligent staff without a medical or nursing degree have been trained to provide hemodialysis treatment. Nurses became trainers who would visit and support patients who were dialyzing at home. In many renal units during the 1970s, including the one where I worked in London, there was no provision for patients who needed to be dialyzed on a long-term basis in the hospital. Patients were only accepted for dialysis with the understanding that they would be trained by our nurses to dialyze themselves at home or in one of a few centrally based facilities which were not staffed. The latter provided the opportunity for patients who were working in London but who lived elsewhere, to dialyze themselves overnight rather than travel many miles to their home outside London. The advent of home hemodialysis was in part driven by necessity, but for many patients provided autonomy, which was hugely appreciated. Nowadays, the majority of patients who start treatment with dialysis are over the age of 65 years. In the 70s, very few patients over the age of 55 were accepted onto dialysis programs and would instead be left to die from kidney failure. This was partly due to implicit rationing as a result of resource limitations, but also because it preceded the introduction of central venous catheters and erythropoietin, a product that corrects anemia in patients with kidney disease. In order to undertake long-term hemodialysis treatment during the 1970s, an effective arterial venous fistula was required so that it could be needled in order to remove and return the blood to the patient. With commercial availability of erythropoietin to correct anemia, more elderly patients with kidney failure 
are now able to benefit from dialysis treatment. Towards the end of the 1970s, there was much criticism of the health service in UK because fewer patients were undergoing dialysis treatment per head of population than elsewhere in Europe. Up until 1987, the majority of patients who started treatment with hemodialysis were profoundly anemic. This anemia had often developed slowly in line with the gradual deterioration in renal function. Southwest Wales was one of the first regions to benefit from an increase in provision for hemodialysis, with new hospital-based hemodialysis units opening in Swansea and Carmarthen in 1985. Within four years of opening these units, the number of patients treated with hospital-based hemodialysis who lived in southwest Wales had increased from zero to more than 50. Throughout UK, this expansion of hospital facilities for hemodialysis has continued during the past 30 years, but has not been matched by parallel investment in home hemodialysis. Whilst there are still many patients who have been trained for home hemodialysis, the gradual culture change has meant that this number is smaller than it might otherwise have been. Not only are there the benefits to the patient of being able to dialyze when they wish, but there are also the considerable health benefits of increasing dialysis frequency for those patients who wish to do so. It is now well recognized that dialysis services should provide a full range of unit and home hemodialysis, as well as peritoneal dialysis, and that patients should be helped to decide which mode of treatment is going to be of most benefit to them without any restrictions based on inadequacy of resource. <laughs>